Hello. Um, recently got back from a conference down in Columbia for its elite board members, and there were lots of people there. Universal House of Justice members showed up. Some international counselors were there as well, and lots of different topics were discussed. Um, primarily accompaniment, but another one that was discussed was the idea of study circles, the practice, and how it fits into cluster development. And so I was hoping to talk about that a little bit today because I wanted to write it down, but I thought writing it down really isn't going to convey as much as uh, was said there, and maybe by doing a video it would help out a little bit more. So let's get started. The basic idea is that in Belize we've been considering for a long time, is it really important to do the practice in a study circle? And how does doing the practice really fit into this whole institute and cluster process we've been working on for the last several years? And in many cases, people have looked at the practice and said, well, sometimes I'll do it, sometimes I won't. But really, after looking at what was discussed down in Columbia, it seems like doing the practice is essential to fulfilling the purpose of the study circle, but also making sure that we develop the cluster in a way that will allow it to continue to grow into the future. One of the first things to look at is really what is the purpose of a study circle. And the primary thing to realize is that a study circle is there for the purpose of helping people develop skills to do a particular service. It's not there to teach people about the faith. It's not there to convert people to become Baha'is or whatever the deal happens to be. The purpose of a study circle is to give people skills and the confidence and experience necessary to do some form of service. Primarily children's classes, junior youth groups, continuing to do some study circles, and maybe home visits and other things along those lines. So with that in mind, the thing is to look at what is the structure of a study circle like and how does the practice fit into that and is it really important to do to achieve the purpose of the study circle and really future cluster development. First thing to look at is, okay, let's look at the structure of a uh, study circle. One thing you always have is you have a tutor, but then you have participants. And in this particular example, we have four participants right here. And so when we talk about achieving the goal of a study circle and helping people develop skills, one of the things that's always been encouraged is that we get these individuals that are participating in the study circle to do some form of practice. So for example, in book three, you want to do the practice of doing a children's class. So in this particular case, one way that a tutor might handle this is to split the participants up into teams. So you have one team over here and another team over here. And then you have those teams go out and to do some type of children's class in the Baha'i community or in the larger community um, with people who are children who are Baha'is and non-Baha'is. The basic idea is that when these teams would go out and do their children's class, the thing that's supposed to happen at that point is the tutor is supposed to accompany them in this whole process and go through the whole thing with them. From the very point of putting together the actual, like say, children's class, to finding the children, to actually having the class, snacks, whatever else you want to do. The, the tutor is supposed to go through the whole process with them. And so while the study circle is going on, it would be nice to have this happen, the practice happen at least three, four, or five times so that by the time people are done, they're very confident and assured that they could do it themselves. One of the things that also is nice about doing it in the team is that eventually there are certain people might, that might come out as ones who are very competent, confident, and also willing to lead teams of people to do these type of things. So for example, in one of these teams, maybe one of the people is particularly good at doing these children's classes, likes putting together the lessons, likes basically directing the class and maybe having an assistant. That person can be looked at as someone we might look at in the future as being a leader in other areas in terms of cluster development and in terms of doing service. But the basic idea is if you have these particular teams that are doing the service, maybe in the Baha'i community first to gain some confidence and to feel a little bit more comfortable, but then maybe going out into a larger community and doing those services there. The primary thing is, if people aren't doing the practice, they won't have an opportunity to actually experience what it's like to do these forms of service. And the reason why this is important is because if we do go forward with the practice, then the tutor who is working with these teams gets to experience accompaniment. They understand, begin to understand what it's like, what do they need to do to instill confidence and skills in someone else, how it is to be patient, all those other type of things that are very important when you accompany someone else. The other thing is they get to enhance their own skills. If they're children's class teachers already and they're doing a, a, a book three, they get to learn and develop and, uh, those skills even further 
by helping others to learn those skills as well. In terms of the participants, they get to learn some important things too. First of all, they get to experience what it's like to be accompanied and they're assured and they feel more confident because there's someone else there that's going through this whole process with them. And as they get to experience this in the future when they want to accompany someone, they'll have a better idea of exactly how that's done because they went through the whole process themselves. The next thing, of course, is that they'll be able to develop the skill. If you wanted to go swimming, you took a class in swimming, you'd expect you'd get into the water often so you could actually do what it is that you're supposed to be learning. And the same is true here. Again, if we're doing a children's class or someone's learning how to do junior youth groups, the idea is to um, do the actual practice so people get to develop the skills, not only in theory, but in actual application, so that they can get the experience, the confidence that they need to be able to do this on their own in the future. The other thing is it gives opportunity, if it is, there is an opportunity to split the people up in the teams, it gives people an opportunity to work with others and get a sense of what it is like to work in the team. Oftentimes when we do things in the cluster, it's not only we're doing it ourselves, we're going to be working with other people. This provides a good opportunity to get a sense of, of how that's done. But everybody actually benefits from this process. One of the things that everybody benefits from is a better understanding of how these different service um, avenues uh, and processes work. So for example, if we were doing, uh, let's say, a book six where we were talking about teaching, one of the important things to understand is how do you keep a journal of who you visited and what happened in those particular situations? What type of teaching materials do you need? Who do you need to talk to to get those teaching materials? How much do those teaching materials cost? Um, how do you schedule a meeting with people beforehand? Are there things you're supposed to do even before you go out and meet with someone, like pray or something along those lines that should be done? If we're doing the practice, then people get to see exactly how that process works in actual application and therefore they'll get a better understanding of how to do it if they need to do it in the future. Um, the other thing is that you get to develop enduring relationships and fellowship. One of the things that the Universal House of Justice is telling us is it's important that as this process moves forward that the community becomes more united, there's more love, there's stronger relationships. One of the important ways that a study circle can contribute to this is as we do the practices, people will begin to come together, they'll begin to um, enjoy the service, and begin to develop relationships that are hopefully enduring and go beyond just the study circle and into future service. So that's the idea behind the practice. By doing the practice, we get to achieve the uh, purpose of the study circle, which is the development of skills and the increased likelihood that people will actually do these services when they're done. But beyond this, you can use the same process we're talking about here with the main person with accompaniment for the other service avenues as well. You can imagine this could be an animator and there could be some junior youth right here too. And the junior youth could be working together for several years and then you might notice one or two of the junior youth that are really good leaders in the group. And then you might eventually take them away and, and work with them individually and eventually have them start their own junior youth groups or children's classes or something like that in the future. The same process that we're talking about here in terms of doing the practice and eventually accompanying people in that practice could be used with uh, uh, children's classes, junior youth groups or whatever. But one of the important things to understand about all of this and one of the major issues we've been trying to figure out lately is how is it that we can find people with the skills and experience necessary to go on and help the clusters develop by um, developing structures such as the cluster, cluster agencies. The auxiliary board members need assistance that can go out there and accompany people while this, uh, the cluster is developing. We also need to find cluster institute coordinators who can help with this whole process. And we need to be able to find people who can be on the area teaching committee that can help go out there and help the community have collective efforts in terms of reaching out to people and telling them about the faith. How do we uh, train these people? How do we find the people to fill these positions? We do that by finding the people who have worked well in the study circle process and who have worked well when doing the practices. If you have a tutor who's... At the end of the last video, we were talking about how in Belize we've had particularly difficulty at some times looking for people to fill some of these roles. The assistance to the auxiliary board, uh, cluster institute coordinators or as area teaching committee members. And 
What was mentioned was the fact that when we start looking for people to fill these roles, one of the best ways we can do that is just by looking at people in the community already who have been doing a good job as a tutor, who's been doing the practices with their particular participants, and actually going on and um, accompanying them and making sure that they're able to do their service well. And also we can look at people who have been doing the practices, and in particular those who have been good team leaders, people who have been able to not only uh, do the service well themselves, but are maybe uh, able to help other people too. So when we look for those type of people, those are the people we can immediately plug in here in terms of developing our cluster agencies. So when we go from milestone one, which is basically individual efforts, on to milestone two, where we start developing structures within the uh, cluster, to be able to help the cluster develop. We start looking at making sure we have the proper people in the cluster agencies that um, are supposed to administer affairs. Then at that particular case, we can look at tutors, for example, who have done a good job accompanying, because that's exactly what the cluster institute coordinator is supposed to do. And so we could maybe put that person in there initially to work by themselves, but maybe in the future as things grow, they'll focus on being able to work in the study circles area. Then we look at people who have done children's classes, who have worked with children, have been able to bring other people in and accompany them to be children's class teachers as well. We can have them come in and be an institute coordinator in that area. And the same thing would work for the junior youth groups. In the area of area, in the, in the situation of area teaching committee, in that particular case, we look for those people who have been involved in book six and who have been out there teaching. Especially again, those that have been team leaders who have gone out there, have done the practice, have led teams of people, to talk to people within the community, have understand how the journals work, scheduling events, the teaching materials needed, how to get those materials. Those are people we immediately plug in here. And in terms of being assistants, we just plug in anybody who's been working in this uh, institute process that's been actively involved in doing the service and in accompanying other people as well. The basic idea is if we're doing the study circles correctly, if we're doing that with the practice, and if we encourage people who are involved in service to work with other people and accompany those people um, in the, uh, the implementation of those services, then what will end up happening is that we'll automatically have people who can come into these posi particular positions who will be familiar with the skills and the attitude and everything else that's necessary to be successful and will likely be able to take on these roles pretty well. So at the end of it, the basic idea is that the practice of the study circle is essential because it's a foundation activity upon which almost everything else in the cluster is built. By doing the practice, we actually are able to go out there and have growing numbers of people who can be resources to the community because they're confident and skilled in terms of doing what they're doing. Uh, and the tutors themselves get to come uh, experience accompanying uh, those people who are doing those things. We develop a culture of accompaniment that will help provide support throughout the whole system. And then eventually those people who are doing this work will be able to fill in the cluster agencies that are so essential for a cluster as it moves from milestone one to milestone two. I think that's about it. Um, I hope we have a good discussion about issues like this in the coming future. And if there's any questions, you can always write. Um, and we can hopefully uh, further the discussion there. Thanks.